Today is August 2nd, 2005. Yes, and it's 10.30. Right. Sogarty's New York. Right. We're at 7 Trees Terrace. Okay, I'm Alan Grzynski. Post 72 in Saugerties, New York, and we're, um, this is the ongoing uh, Library of Congress Veterans uh, History Project. So, okay, I got Mr. Klum here today. Uh, were you uh, drafted or did you enlist? I was drafted what, in, you, uh, around June of 1945. In fact, I was about seven weeks from the time I graduated from high school, mm -hmm. I was in the Army. I went in August 8th, 1945. Okay, so you were, you were right at the end of uh, right at the end of World War II. It was just near the end of mm -hmm. World War II, right? But uh, I guess I shouldn't say any more to you. Ask me these questions. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's fine. No, it's fine. Anytime you want to jump well, in I with took, anything. I took uh, a training at Camp Wheeler, Georgia, <laughs> and uh, near Macon, and we took what was called Japanese combat training because we were going to be in the invasion of Japan. Yeah. I would have been in this, probably the second wave, which would have, would have gone in about February of 1946. Mm -hmm. And I would have been some bloodbath. Yeah. But uh, Mr. Truman had the bomb dropped, mm -hmm. so that canceled that out. But uh, I had 17 weeks of basic. Okay. Fifth, fifth Battalion B Company. <laughs> So, yeah, so after that, did you, uh, would you go after boot camp? You can go on with your story. Well, after boot camp, uh, I came home for what they call a delay in route in December of uh, 45. And I was home for like four or five days. And uh, then I, I left for Camp Pickett, Virginia. And from Camp Pickett, Virginia, I was shipped overseas. I got on the boat January 23rd, 1946. And I arrived in uh, La Havre, France, in one of the cigarette camps. They were named after cigarettes, Chesterfields, Campbell's, mm -hmm. Lucky Strikes. I don't remember to this day which one. <laughs> I like to think it was Chesterfield, because maybe I used to smoke a Chesterfield once in a while. <laughs> this was in La Havre, France, and from there I went to Neustadt, Germany, which was called a, re a replacement depot, or as we say in the Army, Repel Depot. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I contracted uh, scarlet fever, and then when I got out of the hospital in Marburg, I was assigned to uh, Third Division Sigma Corps Headquarters Company in a place called Bad Bildung in Germany, which is a resort town, even nicer, I would say, in a way than Lake Georgia at the time. And mm -hmm. I'm not making comparisons; I don't mean it that way, but. Uh, Bob Wildingen was uh, located 30 miles southeast of Castle, Germany. And Castle was in the northern part of the American zone. And I, had, I was there for a few months, and uh, I had good, really good duty there. And they had mineral baths. People used to walk down the street with a, with a glass and a glass <laughs> straw sucking on the mineral water, mm -hmm. they had mineral bath you could go into, and, uh, beautiful hotels. So you're in the occupation army in Germany then? This is occupation army. Right. Did you, uh... But I was, I was, pardon? Do you, did you have any, uh, did you ever be near the front where the Soviets were, or did you ever go by the Soviet sector? No, that was the eastern, that was the eastern zone. Mm -hmm. I was in the American zone, okay. so, which was to the west. Mm -hmm. To the west, and I guess probably would be south of Berlin. Okay. Yeah. But I have to say, before I get, I had another assignment I haven't really finished because I was in two different outfits. Okay. And I got out as a PFC, and I was thinking about it before you got here. Uh, I never attained any rank further than PFC because I wasn't in any outfit mm -hmm. long enough. Mm -hmm. And from uh, Bad Wilding in Germany, I went down to Frankfurt, Germany, and I was uh, in the G, what they call G5 Division, Displaced Persons Bureau. I worked in the IG Farben building, huh. and IG Farben was a munitions man. Yeah. They were bad boys. Yeah. I worked in the IG Farben building in Germany, which at the time was the largest mm -hmm. office building in Germany. 
and I worked there, as I said, in G5, displaced persons, and uh, I was there for a few months, and from there I did a lot of traveling. I was lucky. I went to Switzerland for a week. I have a, a book there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can show us these. Yeah. Our leave in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful book. It's a little bit, a little bit beat up, but it brings back a lot of memories. I went to Paris. Sorry about that. I went to Paris a couple of times, mm -hmm. and uh, I ended up bunking with a a fellow that I graduated from high school with. Sorgeries. Sorgeries High School. He was a son of the superintendent of schools, Roger Morse. Oh. And he and I ended up together. Granty Morse's son. Grant, uh, okay, you know yeah. Granty Morse. I just the school. I know. Okay. It's yeah. named after him in his pictures. That's about it. In the back of his, in his office on the back wall was a, an indelible uh, phrase that you never forget, if you don't make excuses, make good. <laughs> but the dog tags, let me see, how, we're, we're, we're not out of, Frank, we're not out of uh, Frankfurt mm -hmm. yet, are we? Uh, Frankfurt on the mine. I went to a rest camp in Osmondhausen, mm -hmm. and I went to another one up on the Zeta Z. What else did we do there? I guess that's about it for Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. So now we're in December of 1946, uh, uh, okay? Mm -hmm. <coughs> and I got on board a ship, uh, a general class ship from Bremerhaven, Germany, on the mm -hmm. North Sea. Mm -hmm. From there, we sailed to the United States. I was on a general class ship. I forgot to mention this. Going over, I was on the USS Sea Tiger. Mm -hmm. It was a converted uh, Liberty ship. Okay. Yeah. I used to have gun turrets up on deck, and when they mm -hmm. were all, all the guns that were had been removed. Mm -hmm. And I slept up on deck a couple of times. But that was a smaller ship than the general mm -hmm. class. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. So, let's see. Now I'm coming back mm -hmm. home, okay? Mm -hmm. I got home on December the 24th, Christmas Eve about, I arrived home about 24 minutes to midnight. Mm -hmm. I just made it. Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I was, and I'd gotten in the United States the 24th in the morning, and I got home that night. Mm -hmm. I was lo really lucky. They were, <coughs> and the you know, was like, uh, mm. Candy. So when you were in Germany, though, you kept in contact with your family. You, uh, oh you yes. Know. Okay. Yeah, I have uh, I have the letters uh, that I wrote to my parents. I have a, a ton of letters mm. from my aunts and uncles and friends and so forth. It's good that you keep them. That I kept all these. I don't know. Yeah. Probably they're going to end up in the waste basket, <laughs> the trash heap. I don't know. It just seems a shame. Of course, they're personal, but yet. Yeah, there's a history there too. You could compile them in a book. Um, compile them in a book, and um, we'll uh, put it in the museum if you want to do it. So, as you know, our I've read uh, I've read most of the letters mm -hmm. down through the years. Mm -hmm. them. So it's uh, so from there. Uh, now we're home at Christmas time, aren't we? Mm -hmm. So after that, this is the. This is the second Christmas. I was lucky. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was overseas 11 months in one day. Okay. January 23rd to December 24th, mm -hmm. uh, 1946. Mm -hmm. Because the minute you get on the boat mm -hmm. you're over, and you go out of the territorial waters, mm -hmm. you're overseas. Mm -hmm. That's where they, that's when they mm -hmm. count it. Mm -hmm. And you probably know that. Yeah. Even, even Canada was considered overseas, huh? and Greenland. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For me, yeah. yeah. Are you there? Yes. Yeah. Oh, good. So, so then uh, after Christmas, I went back to uh, Fort Dix. Sometimes it's called Camp Dix. I never could figure out which, but I think at the time it was Fort Dix. Uh, same place, but it was different, two different names. And uh, from there, I got my discharge. 
and I had leave coming, I guess, 30 days leave, so they mm -hmm. sent me home and I got my discharge in the mail. Oh, okay. Medical discharge. So you so you made it home, made it home with, uh, right here in Saugerties when they sent you your discharge? Oh, yes. Okay, wow. Yeah. I've been here ever since. Mm -hmm. So there's some more. This residence here, I'm just getting used to the neighborhood. I kind of like it here. Mm -hmm. I've been here uh, 42 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when you came home, did you, uh, what did you do? Uh, did you take any courses on the GI Bill or? <coughs> no, I didn't. I thought about going to uh, to college, but by that, by 1947, I came home in January. I mean, I, I was discharged January 30, 47. And mm -hmm. I went into business with my father down on Main Street, and I was married in uh, July uh, 18th of 1947. Mm -hmm. And I thought about going to college. In fact, we went up to Oneonta mm -hmm. State Teachers College. I looked okay. at that, but I never, it never came to fruition. Mm -hmm. But one thing I always regret was when I was in basic training. They called the uh, battalion out one day. <coughs> I think it's about a thousand men. Mm -hmm. And they said, we have a list here of 20 men that are eligible to go to uh, officers' training school. And anybody that, of those 20 that wants to just step forward. So let me just put it this way. Uh, not one of us stepped forward. <laughs> I was one of the 20. <laughs> Is that something? <laughs> I guess we wanted to get out. Yeah, more than coming off. And he also had a chance to uh, learn uh, to be sent to school to learn Japanese. Huh. That I regret <laughs> very, very much that I didn't do it. Do you want to hear about this kind of sure, stuff? Sure, go ahead. Sure, that's that's what we're that's what the project is here for. So. So that was you. You regretted not learning Japanese then. Right. Oh. You got any questions there that I? Uh, what there do was, I miss? Do just no. Just uh, basically, you know, in Germany, uh, did you, any of your uh, when you were there, did they do anything for good luck, or did you see any entertainers? No, we never never had that. I, mm -hmm. I noticed that, that you, it was one of the questions that you had mentioned mm -hmm. uh, before the program began. Mm -hmm. No, we never we never had that USO. Yeah, everything. Was well, we had a USO club in in Bodville, Dunga, and then mm -hmm. I think we had. It, yeah, we had a sh shows in the Palmen Garden mm -hmm. in uh, Frankfurt, Germany, mm -hmm. but they were local people. Right. Most of them were, were German uh, mm -hmm. entertainers. There was a guys do anything? Did anybody pull any pranks or anything? Because I guess in an occupation army, has a lot more a lot more time on your hands. So there's uh, did anybody do anything that humorous or stuff like that? Well, there's some things that we're done. I guess we can't even talk about. <laughs> But uh, not real bad. But mm -hmm. we li I lived in a in Bodville Dungan. I lived in a German, uh, of course, a German doctor's house. It was mm -hmm. three stories. Wow. He had the first floor, mm -hmm. and we had the the next two floors we occupied. Mm -hmm. We had no bed check or anything like that. It was pretty. So your MOS there, your military occupational specialty was what? Well, what I was doing, I was a clerk typist at that time. But then when I went to uh, Frankfurt, Germany, when I worked for uh, Displaced Persons Bureau, mm -hmm. I mentioned before that I didn't get the rank because I wasn't right. there. But I was doing uh, uh, staff sergeant work, mm -hmm. and I had a gal working for me by the name of Helen DeMollis, and she was a, uh, a, 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 a buck sergeant. Which is American. She was an American girl, yeah. Whack, a whack. Mm -hmm. She was a buck sergeant. In other words, she had a she had a field rank right. to, to command troops, and, and she was a court typist <laughs> working for me. <laughs> what a strange way. Is it okay I mention her name? Sure, yeah. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, you can mention any of your friends or any people that you know or anything like that. But she, when I left for uh, to come back home, she mailed a lot of stuff mm -hmm. in boxes. I had, in fact, I've got some of them yet. Mm -hmm. Walked right back at you mm -hmm. by that door in okay. one of the boxes with her name on it. Uh, she mailed them back to me. I know you got quite a bit of memorabilia here on your table. Is there anything that's uh... yes? Well, here's the dog tags. Mm -hmm. uh, of 
course, it's, we, we know what's on the dog tags. It says uh, your name, your serial number, mine is 422484. And uh, A is your blood type. And then down in the corner is T. I'm, I'm a Protestant. And then there's a T45, I think it is. I think the K. I'm trying to remember what that was for. And then from the Lutheran Church, I, I got this. Uh, It's in, it says, in case of need, notify Lutheran chaplain. Okay. National Lutheran Council. And on the back, it says Bureau of, and then it has a flag with a crossover. It has a, a, a shield of the United States with a crossover, and then mm -hmm. below it says military personnel. Mm -hmm. So those yeah, that extra on there. I had with me mm -hmm. at all times. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but getting back, I'm glad you mentioned the memorabilia. Mm -hmm. I made out of a lot of Boy Scout memorabilia. Okay. And I have an opinion about that. And uh, I was a, a scout first class in Troop 38. And I firmly believe that being a member and training in the Boy Scouts of America mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. very, very important mm -hmm. uh, to anyone entering military service. Mm -hmm. I, I firmly believe that. Basic and discipline. to this day, mm -hmm. I still know the uh, mm -hmm. Scout, Scout Oath. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to say it if I'm on camera. That's the, mm -hmm. on my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country to obey the Scout law, to help other people at all times to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. And the scout law is, a scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Mm -hmm. I think they should have put reverent in the beginning. <laughs> but that's very good. Here. <laughs> there is, do you, you have a... I, I said, shall I say that or not? So they're going to think this is corny. No, no, no. There's a item there, it's like a... Um, Something for on the shoulder. I know. I know. Well, you, you know. I, I I can't remember what it what it was called. Mm -hmm. I just pulled that down at the last minute. Mm -hmm. But I just I, I want to just mention this, and we'll, and we'll get back to that. Mm -hmm. This is my uh, third infantry third, division. third division yep. patch, and I'm very pleased that I was in the third division because mm -hmm. that's the one that that Woody Murphy was. Woody in. Murphy was in, right? Yeah. And you have the, and this one is a flaming arrow division. Yeah. This was a headquarters. The headquarters. Company. United States Forces European Theater Corps of mm -hmm. Houston. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just doing an interview. Excuse me. Sure. Bob? Yeah. I'm in the middle of an interview. When I open the I open the side door and you can go right on down. I already checked it. It's leaking and it has to be replaced. It does. So I'll yeah, I got the measurements so and I shut it off so you have no water coming out of the house. Otherwise it's leaking all the floor right now. Forty gallon? Forty gallon heat or so. Okay. Needs to be replaced. Okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Okay. I don't mean to be rude to you. That's okay. My water heater went bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, we've had. We've Am had. I still on television? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I keep it rolling. We've had. We've had stuff happen. People come up in the middle of the uh, filming. And I showed you yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you were mentioning these things. Yeah. They went, went over your shoulder. Oh. Well, I, I'm thinking of the word. I don't know if it has any bearing on it. Croix de Guerre. I don't know why I'm thinking. No, it's a something. It's got. A, it has a French name. It's a. It's the. It's like in the. Croix de Guerre. Yeah. It's a, I've heard of that with oak leaf cluster or mm -hmm. whatever. But the. Uh, the ends are, are all. Are all. Are all uh, I was going to try to clean them. It doesn't matter. Yeah, the copper and they get. Uh, gets it all. Gets it all. Yeah. Uh, oxidized. O oxidized. Oxidized. Yeah. yeah. I even I even have a combination scorebook. This is the when I did my uh, rifle. Oh, okay. Shooting on the rifle oh, range. Oh, you got quite a bit of yeah. stuff here. Yeah, it's good. I've got oh I don't know how many I went I read through them yesterday. In fact, I read the instructions again. <laughs> Probably the first time I ever read them. I hope I read them back in '45. 
but uh, you know it's interesting. Mm -hmm. I had an M1 rifle, mm -hmm. yep. but we uh, also trained with a carbine. Mm -hmm. We also trained with a Browning automatic rifle mm -hmm. with a Thompson submachine mm -hmm. gun, and uh, we did the flamethrower. Mm -hmm. Oh, as, and we did the bazooka. Mm -hmm. Just get your head out of the way with a bazooka, mm -hmm. or you won't have any head left. <laughs> they were something. Yeah, I guess for the invasion of Japan, they were, they were gearing up for everything. I remember firing at, a, mm -hmm. at, a, at an old tank. Mm -hmm. This is a, a basic train. Took a chunk right out of the tank. Mm -hmm. And we shot rifle grenades too, okay. off of our M1s. Off M1 rifles. Usually we'd put that mm -hmm. on the in step of your foot mm -hmm. and aim it in the general direction. Mm -hmm. And fire it. Fire it. Yeah. There was, um, did you uh, keep in contact with anybody that you were in the service with? You know, I regret so much that I, that I didn't. Because there's names of people I know, Harold mm -hmm. Walters in Latacone, Maryland, and mm -hmm. <laughs> Rudy Merlino, his folks had a summer camp up there in uh, Kiskatam, mm -hmm. on the way to Carroll, and Vic, Vic Palateri, and some other guys. Mm -hmm. I never had any kind. There was a fellow from Hunter, New York, also. Okay. I just thought of his name. I was trying to think of it yesterday. Lewis, Lewis Casey's name. Mm -hmm. And I think I've seen him a couple times since since then. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, so you joined uh, evidently you joined a veterans organization. Yeah, I've been a member of the Legion for 50 years. Okay. My card doesn't say so, but there was a glitch sometime mm -hmm. and, that, that, and it got broken. But I have I've been paying for 50 years. Mm -hmm. and I also joined the VFW. Mm -hmm. In fact, I had my Legion cap mm -hmm. on the chair behind mm -hmm. you. I'm proud to be a Legionnaire. Mm -hmm. You probably know this when you came in the front foyer. Yeah, right? the, the Army. Uh, yeah, I'm proud Army. to serve. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, okay. Yeah. So, um, do you, have you ever gone into any reunions or anything like that? Or no, you know, I looked up reunions mm -hmm. and uh, I never could never could find anything. Mm -hmm. I guess because, probably because of the fact that I was with those outfits such a short time. Short time. You know, right. Well, say an average of, mm -hmm. say, five months for each one, because mm -hmm. I was overseas 11 months. Right. And there was some time getting to the first unit and mm -hmm. some time leaving. Mm -hmm. So I figured I was maybe five months or so. So you're, after, after your service time, what did you, what'd you do for your career, for your life? Well, I went to work with, for my father in 1947. Mm -hmm. but they, I started working there before I actually had the, my discharge, mm -hmm. and I spent 27 years on Main Street, and then I okay. decided I was going to do something else. Mm -hmm. and my father wasn't too happy about it, but I ended up working for the County of Ulster oh, okay. in the Division of Purchasing as a supervisor of Central Services. So your so your your career your uh, clerk typist did come in handy for, your, for later on in life. Uh, well, not uh, really. Well, a little bit maybe in the mm -hmm. business, mm -hmm. yeah. but I've been retired 15 years. Okay. I'm 78 years old, mm -hmm. and I lost my wife Madeline on February 15, 1989. So I've been living here alone mm -hmm. for over 16 years. But my daughters are very mm -hmm. Christine and Carol are very good. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't want to hear this stuff. I don't know. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's, it's any anything else that you want to add? So, so, so. Uh, anything that you would you like to add that we haven't covered in the interview? Well, no. Any other questions? That that's about basically. Yeah, that's our that's our that's our uh, that's our. Through the questions that maybe I must have, I must have skipped something. <laughs> no, this, we, we got pretty much everything that they had asked for. Uh, really? Yeah. So. Okay. When you leave, I'll say, oh gee, why didn't I mention? That's happened to us sometimes sure already. Yes. So. I'm looking at, mm -hmm. oh, yes, there is one thing. Yes, sure, go ahead. Yes, indeed. Uh, I mentioned the Boy Scouts, but I dar darn near forgot. Before I went in service, mm -hmm. we had a, a, a observation 
place on a, on called Nanigo Hill. It's off yeah. of uh, Montgomery Street. Right. And I was, uh, and I have a, the card here, Aircraft Warning Service, U.S. Army well, like civilian Observer it? Identification. Okay. And I was, uh, I was just a kid. I was five foot six. I'm five five ten now, mm -hmm. and I weighed 117 pounds. <laughs> I weigh a lot more than that now, <laughs> but it doesn't say what what year. So sometime during the war, and here's the patch mm -hmm. that you would wear on your arm. Okay. A little bit moth eaten, but you can <laughs> still read it. Okay, sorry, let me see it again. Air warning. I would get AWS must be air warning service. I would guess. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I'm Air Force here. Observer. Yep. Yeah. All right. And then uh, we have these these books to identify the planes. Oh, air, air, aerial identity. Aircraft identification. Japanese, German. Uh -huh. Recognition pictorial manual. Right here. Yeah, it's good. Good. Excellent. That's it. Yeah. Some that was during the Second hmm. uh, World War. But here's another one, and this is a, a later model, mm -hmm. a later edition, I should say, aircraft recognition. And chances are that was the yeah. Korean War. Yeah, because like I also I I also served after I got out of service. The Korean War started in July of 1950. Mm -hmm. I also served there during the Korean War. I believe we had a civilian service. Oh, okay. Oh, well, you mean aircraft? Uh, oh, you mean like a civilian air patrol? Right. Well, yeah. Well, same as we it did be mm -hmm. right. war, in World War II. Right. Oh, right. Same place. Right. Right. But the the, the uh, it was aircraft recognition. Okay. The aircraft recognition thing is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like a little bit later addition than the. Than the this year, March 1953. 1953. Anyhow, that's, that's that. Okay. And, uh, what else? Well, you got to. Oh, you got to. Oh, albums? No. You have to, you have to. Oh. What are they, uh, your like letters and stuff that you have? Oh, Lord, I, I've got weekend passes, I've got bus tickets, I've got train tickets, I've got, yeah. Oh my gosh, you kept quite for, a... For, yeah, I, I, I saved everything. Wow, quite yeah. a itinerary. <laughs> I can really track my dates. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, most people don't even have anything, not even not even close to what you have. They're not even. But I have very little clothing. That's the, the point. The, <laughs> the only thing I have, I showed you these. Mm -hmm. Right. And I have these uh, that go up on your collar. Right. Yeah, the U.S. Uh, was it, uh, the U.S. goes up here. The cross. Cross rifles. Oh yeah, for marksmanship. Okay. I don't think so. I don't think I got any. And then the, the U.S. button. Okay. Oh yeah. Right. The shoulder. The college. College. <laughs> the one package I never received. It, mm -hmm. it was open in New York City. And mm -hmm. They stole it. I had a field jacket. <laughs> oh. Okay. All the stuff that I that I really you wanted to keep. Treasured. Yeah. I, I love that field jacket. Yeah. Probably wouldn't fit me today, but. Yeah. Yeah, you can carry a lot of stuff in them. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> okay. I don't think there's anything more over here. Uh... No, I'm mm -hmm. surprised. You, a lot of people, you, you kept a lot of stuff. A lot of people have not even even half of what you, not even a tenth of what you kept. So. Really? A lot of people just, you know, tossed it or threw it away or stuff like that. There's, um, well, chances are mm -hmm. this stuff will go over, over to the American mm -hmm. Legion. Right. I think I've got to tell my, mm -hmm. my children, my daughters, mm -hmm. uh, 
if, if they want it. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot of stuff. Some a lot of the stuff that we have isn't some stuff we don't have. It's not on display because we don't have we don't have room for it. Well, that's it. You won't have, have room probably. Yeah, for this but stuff. no, we, we we have enough stuff for like books and stuff. Well, in fact, we're I'm in the process of getting another bookshelf, so we're uh, we put more more books. Put more so books more there. books, yeah. So, all right then. Okay. Um, thank you very much for and, uh, the interview. Thank you. I hope sure. I. Uh,